Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the simple and AI-powered rewards and recognition platform for employee engagement. As we delve into the world of human resources, we must acknowledge that it is a field that requires equal parts of artistry and science. Managing people can be a delicate act and HR professionals must navigate a complex landscape of policies, procedures, and personalities. However, even the most experienced HR professionals are not immune to the occasional misstep or blunder. Therefore, it is essential to identify and avoid common mistakes to ensure the smooth functioning of an organization and the well-being of its employees. For in the world of HR, the stakes are high and the margin for error is slim. So without further ado, let us embark on a journey of discovery and exploration where we shall uncover the quirky, fascinating, and sometimes amusing mistakes that HRs should steer clear of. Hello listeners, welcome to another episode of Vintage Influences podcast where we explore a wide range of HR topics that are sure to grab your attention and inspire you. I'm your host, Sanjeevani Saikya, and today we will be having a conversation on the worst mistakes every HR should avoid. And for the same, I have with me Joy George, Senior Director and Head HR at CDK Global India. Hi, Joy. Hello. Hi. Morning. Good morning. First of all, I would like to wholeheartedly thank you for giving your invaluable time and joining us in today's episode. Before we dive deeper into today's topic, worst mistakes HRs should avoid, could you kindly walk us through your corporate journey so far? Hi, Sanjeevani. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, I've been a practicing human resource professional for the last 25 years. Uh, most part of my early careers I spent with Tata Group. That's where uh, the best of my HR professional formation happened. Thereafter, I moved to a product setup uh, within IT organization, uh, within the IT industry, which was eventually acquired by IBM and subsequently moved on to another uh, IT conglomerate in many ways uh, called Capita. Spent about you know, a little over five years and then uh, joined my current setup, which is CDK Global. Over here, I have the overall responsibility for uh, taking care of uh, people processes for CDK in India. I do also take care of uh, corporate communication and branding, so to facilities uh, and real estate here in India. Wonderful, Joy. Thank you for sharing your remarkable journey with us. With that context in mind, we can now dive straight into the topic. In this episode, we'll be discussing the worst mistakes HRs must avoid. But before addressing the particular questions I have in mind, could you kindly share with us some of the most epic mistakes you have seen HR professionals make in your experience? Absolutely, Sanjini. That's very, very interesting. And, you know, something that I really like to talk about uh, and share with, you know, colleagues in the fraternity. I think in the first place, uh, what I see is a lot of HR professionals uh, do see this as a sort of, you know, career choice that they have made. Which, of course, is absolutely true and valid, and that's uh, one of those things. But I believe, you know, like uh, some of the other uh, choices with respect to careers people make, such as, you know, people choose to become teachers, people choose to become doctors. Uh, similarly, people choosing to become an HR professional, according to me, is beyond choosing a career. Uh, teaching, of course, is uh, formally recognized as a noble profession. And so therefore, uh, even in the industrial dispute tag, teachers are not classified as workers. Similarly, I would say while human resource professionals are, you know, employees uh, and, um, and, you know, professionals in any ways, I think, you know, uh, they are little more than uh, any other professional at this point of time because uh, they have a noble cause to pursue as part of their career uh, or as part of their job in any of the organizations. So therefore, I would think uh, all HR professionals, you know, should have a purpose beyond their purpose. A purpose Great, yeah. that is beyond their purpose. And that is what makes HR's professional, uh, HR's, HR profession as a noble one and a unique one. 
which is something a lot of people don't realize. So therefore, you know, I call it as something that they miss out. That's one. Second thing is, of course, um, uh, sometimes, you know, we HR professionals uh, do talk about uh, employee fairness, you know, more than required. Um, of course, you know, I'm a passionate advocate of uh, employee wellness, well-being, welfare, all of those things at all point of time. And that's my priority. But at the same time, off late, I have started to think about and talk about equally uh, on the aspect of employer fairness. Um, I think, you know, the HR's job is to make sure that we, we are custodians of fairness on both the sides. Um, employers cannot be treated without fairness. Employees cannot be treated without fairness. And the right function and the right people to balance these two from a fairness perspective is HR as a function. I'm not too sure if all of us in the HR industry or HR fraternity do have this uh, distinction and clarity in their mind. So therefore, I would think, you know, could be a kind of uh, area of, you know, uh, overlook or potential mistake at this point of time. True. And uh, third thing is, you know, um, people uh, do talk about uh, career growth and professional development and all of those things, you know, these things are equally important. I don't question about any of these things. But, you know, in my view, HR profession or HR career is, is not something that should be focused from a development or a growth perspective. It has to be seen more like a kind of, you know, realization in life. It's a calling in life. It's a mm. vocation. It's an opportunity. It is not about developing. It's more about realizing, recognizing and actualizing it. I'm not too sure if um, a lot of us in the HR fraternity and in the HR industry at this point of time do think about our careers from the, these perspectives as well. So these are uh, two to three things um, that um, I would think uh, areas that, you know, people in the HR industry can pay a little more attention to Sanjeevi. Yes, that was very well said, Joy. I must agree. As an HR professional, hiring the right candidate is crucial for the success of any organization. However, with so many factors to consider and uh, multiple candidates to evaluate, it can be easy to make mistakes in the hiring process. So, what are some of the common mistakes that HR professionals make when hiring new employees? I would love to hear your insights. And uh, Joy, it would be great if you could advise uh, on how to avoid these pitfalls and make sure we are selecting the best candidates for our company. Absolutely. That's again a very, very pertinent question. And I would say this question will never lose its significance even in the years to come. The reason Correct. being, war for talents in Jeevani, as you know, is something that all of us have been talking about uh, in the IT industry specifically. According to me, the war has been won long ago and we still assume that war is going. The fact of the matter is the war has been won long, long ago and talent actually has won the war. And, you know, we keep waging the war. Uh, without any outcome further because the war has already been won. Now, the point is, therefore, there is an undue amount of pressure on people uh, who are sitting in the hiring uh, positions to somehow get the talent on board. As a result, a lot of things get overlooked, which probably is not in the best interest of the candidate, nor is in the best interest of uh, the, the, the hiring organization or the hiring teams. So I would just call out two or three things, you know, that probably gets overlooked in this whole purpose, in, in this whole uh, exercise. The first thing that I think is, you know, people, particularly from HR side, they forget to explain to the candidate, why are we hiring you? True. And that's very, very important, right? You know, uh, just like every newborn brings a bundle of new hope, every new hire is expected to bring a bundle of new hope to the organization. Okay. Nobody yeah. is hired into a role without a need. Everyone who is hired into an organization uh, is hired with a hope and expectation this person is going to turn things around. Yeah. And however, I'm not too sure, Sanjeevani, if you know us in the HR profession do take the time to therefore explain the real purpose of the role and what, why are we hiring this person? So that's one. The second thing is, you know, um, uh, it's important for the person who is being hired to look beyond the role that someone is signing up for because you know. Uh, someone is signing up for a role, but that can actually be deemed as a short term if you don't spend time to explain. So therefore, it is important for the HR person or people to explain what can create success in the first place and uh, what are those things that one should stay focused on. 
you get me what i'm trying to say so what can yes. create hey we are we are hiring you you know the job descriptions you know we have explained what the key characteristics and competencies that are expected but over and above that here are a few things that you should stay focused on to make sure that you create success i'm not too sure if if within that you know 45 minutes to 1 hour time uh, we find a slot to explain this that's one and the third one is you know something that i touched upon which is talking about in you know, the next level what is the next level role what is the next level goal and what is the next level growth and that is something that will actually create an element of uh, ambition and that's that's something that will create an element of excitement and a kind of you know futuristic uh, vision about uh, someone's joining in an organization so these are three things it's about you know therefore why are we hiring what are things that one should stay focused on and what's the next level role uh, goal and growth are three things which i think a lot of people overlook at this point of time uh, when they talk about hiring interesting you see um, effective policy implementation again if we talk about policy implementation uh, effective policy implementation is pivotal for the success of any organization and hr professionals play a vital role in this process however implementing policies can be a complex task that requires careful planning and execution so from your experience what are some of the common mistakes that hr professionals make when implementing policies again an excellent question because you know we are dealing with multi generational people yes i'm sure you know during my early days of my career policy is something that i used to look up look at with you know sense of uh, sacred feeling because they are the ones that clearly tells you what to do what not to do what can you look forward to and what can you not expect all of those things right and anyone seem to be uh, not following the policy it was almost seen as a kind of criminal offense mm-hmm. that's how i used to look at policies and then obviously things changed a lot uh, people have uh, people have started you know rewriting policies because nobody goes through any lengthy document anymore uh, people don't have interest in uh, reading policy because most of the policies are written with a sense of restriction or oppressive fee feelings etc so the first thing therefore you know i think in today's time we need to make sure is we don't write long running policies ideally people mm. would like to see policies written in twitter language yeah. nobody has got time to read uh, more than two or three sentences uh, at this point of time which is a proven fact right and workplaces are becoming more and more um, younger and younger and then you know young workforce is always used to uh, shortest forms of communication because that's how they they were born into so to say and then they got used to so there is nothing unusual about it mm. uh, so therefore too long legal sounding organizational dictat kind of a policy uh, document is something that we must avoid uh, that's that's the first thing second thing is our natural tendency uh, to make it sound as a set of do's and don'ts in the sense of making it sound like an oppressive restrictive stuff is something that we should minimize by choosing the right set of words we should we should make it sound like more like an enabling uh, a liberative uh, a supportive uh, document than anything else and uh, the third thing is uh, we should actually avoid to the extent possible uh, calling it as a policy document per se mm-hmm. rather we may like to call it as a kind of policy guidelines for you that guideline actually minimizes uh, minimizes the aggressiveness that you see in this whole document so to say uh, so that's something that can easily be done and the fourth thing is you know uh, in writing up a policy document a lot of people overlook the aspect of making it inclusive hmm. uh, not only in terms of the content but in terms of the choice of words as well workplace yeah. is becoming more and more uh, diverse and diverse yes. yes absolutely diverse and so therefore the need for being uh, extremely conscious about making things uh, inclusive uh, is more than a necessity at this point of time and uh, not too, not too sure if uh, every one of us in the hr uh, fraternity do pay attention to so these are some of those things i thought we must uh, start paying attention to uh, sanjeevni true uh, joy it's my personal observation and i don't know if you would agree with me or not but usually uh, what i have gone on to see is hr's many a times implement a one size fits all approach to employee benefits and recognition programs so i would like to ask you how can hr professionals avoid taking a one size fits all approach to employee benefits and recognition program and instead tailor these programs to meet the diverse needs and preferences of their employees 
beautiful question beautiful question and you know um, it has become far more pertinent in today's times than uh, ever before because we are really dealing with multi generational workforce and yes. each of them have got a different expectation from from the workplace that's very very clear so that yeah. one size fit all approach to anything be it be recognition be it be benefits or you know be it be development programs long term planning all of those things can actually be different actually there are people who join with only short term plans so to talking to them about long term plan itself can be a sort of big time put off for them they might think this mm. is not the place i have joined the wrong place so therefore in my favorite choice of words you know i call it as time for different strokes for different folks and once you know who are your different folks in the organization you will clearly know what are the different strokes that they would require yes uh, let's 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 start with you know the the youngest you know lot in the organization people who are uh, new in career yeah. uh, they would of course be looking for you know three or four things and the first thing that they would be looking for is a pleasant working environment because they have just in you know, a mode out of a college uh, or an academic institute and then you know they don't want to feel a sort of you know big time difference between the culture they were used to and then you know they are getting into mm-hmm. that should not you know uh, the new the new environment should not put them off and start looking at work for as a kind of necessary evil in life so to say so therefore yeah. that pleasant atmosphere second thing is you know uh, they want a bit of a job security it is not that you know the first job uh, they are they are okay to get you know fired for any reason yeah. they like to because they are beginning to assess work itself because they have to uh, god willing go on for at least you know 30 to 40 years right you know doing pretty much the same thing so therefore security and the third thing is you know they like to keep the element of learning going and then of course uh, conversation is something that would provide them a sort of peer identity so therefore these are these are three or four things uh, the junior most want someone who, who is new in career may look for and the second category if you look at someone uh, with something like you know 5 to 10 years of experience let's say they would also be looking for interesting job content mm. uh, and then you know that's the time when they look at some sort of a growth opportunity as well um and then of course learning is something uh, that continues to be a kind of requirement in competitive salary again is you know something that all of us anyway need so they so that's the second category if you may the second uh, type of folks so to say yeah and the third type of folks i would classify is you know people who have got into a sort of leadership role or you know people have mm-hmm. started growing up the ladder they have a slightly different uh, set of expectations you know say like they are really looking to get leadership exposure they are keen to understand you know slightly longer term prospects they are keen to understand what is the direction business is taking and they are also uh, looking to balance work and life because they may have got into a family and so therefore the additional responsibility of balancing things both at work and home so therefore they require a different set of uh, for let's say strokes so to say yeah. and uh, the fourth category to keep it simple would be you know people who are uh, what i call it as uh, the last phase of their career which is uh, a phase of actualization and maximization people who are looking to actualize their true potential and maximize the true returns uh, for everything that they have done in life yeah. so there in my view they would look for more of an empowerment opportunity to contribute to the bottom line um, involvement in you know business strategy long term initiatives and they like to own and take responsibility for things right you know having spent 15 20 years in the industry if they still are not given that opportunity to own and you know be accountable for i think you know they are not going to be very excited about it. so therefore considering these you know four categories of people i think it's important to uh, do some sort of you know bucketing of uh, uh, things uh, that the hr is looking at to create that you know different strokes for different folks experience in the workplace which can never be overlooked so you asked me a beautiful question this is something that i have been uh, very very conscious of to great extent you know we have successfully implemented some of these uh, things um, in cdk therefore you know we are seen as a, we are seen and rated as a certified great place to work as well uh, since evening yeah great uh, joy you have mentioned multi generational uh, gaps there so uh, could you like would you be comfortable mentioning say one mistake or one particular mistake that uh, hrs make while uh, bridging the generation gap in the workplace so is there any specific that you would want to mention uh one thing is you know uh let's say uh workplace flexibility which is uh, which is a kind of uh, all time favorite uh, conversation uh, that we have yes. right workplace yes. flexibility most of us actually tend to think uh, 
people who are relatively experienced to do need workplace flexibility more than anybody else you know here i am specifically referring to people who have people have got family people have got children because there are yes. multiple things that they need to look into children going to school parents aging needing hospitalization medical attention people presence um, so managing all these things and you know planning work around all of these things are uh, something that will call for flexibility right so therefore we think they truly require at the same time we do believe that you know the youngsters people who are new, new in career people have just started off their career they don't need as much flexibility is something that you know we somehow begin to think which is a false assumption hmm. in my view in my view they yes. probably need far more flexibility than anybody else yes for them a movie getting launched uh, they would like to watch as the first batch of people yeah. if there is an ipl that is going on and if their favorite team is playing they need the flexibility to watch the match end to end if they are you know friends are on a sort of uh, exploration trip or tour somewhere uh, they would need the flexibility to take a few days off and be part of because for them work is not seen as an end it is only a means means and and unlike you know most of us uh, particularly in my case you know uh, i am senior and seasoned enough 25 plus years of uh, um, industry experience uh, for me work is an end monday till friday i exist only to work um i don't think uh, the new generation those who are new in career do look at work anymore in that way for them work is only a means the monday to friday exercise is only for them to have enough fun on saturday and sunday uh, however however you know uh, a lot of us do overlook the need for flexibility for them uh, that's a serious mistake if you ask me they do need flexibility as well. oh, absolutely correct uh, joy you must be a wonderful hr i must say since you understand mm-hmm. a gender's uh, gender's perspective so well so joy we are arriving at the end of today's episode but before we let you go can you share your thoughts on the role that technology should play in helping hr professionals avoid mistakes and streamline their work processes are there any particular technologies that you have found helpful would you like to share it with our listeners absolutely absolutely i mean you know me by virtue of you know my long standing uh, industry hr uh, practice uh it is not that i was used to the best of technology right you know during my early days uh, computer and email itself was a sort of you know biggest revelation ever and then you know it was a uh, change of world for me of course things have uh, evolved faster faster than one could imagine today technology drives the world no questions around it but the point is a lot of us actually mistake tools and technology can only help you uh, manage scale size analysis uh, to the extent you have clarity in your mind as to what do you need now a person who doesn't have a have enough of clarity as to what is it that you are really looking to get out of no amount of tool and technology can actually help a person who has got clarity as to what is it that you are really looking for there are a lot of tools that can actually help you get the outcome it's almost like you know if you don't know where you where you want to go it doesn't matter what way or which path do you take right you can do anything yes uh, but if you clearly know where is it that you want to go then obviously you need to choose the right one these days you know uh, generative ai is something that you know which we in the hr industry have started talking a lot about which is nothing but you know throwing up newer and newer insights about people behavior behavior patterns uh, people expectations what motivates people what drives people uh, what are some of those you know common characters that you see in high performers what are some of those behavior patterns that you notice in people who are low performers what are p what are certain attributes attributes that you see commonly among people who are not so disciplined about work all of these insights are available through a uh, lot of tools a lot of analytical tools um, so that's on a broader side and if you look at hiring uh, there are a lot of smart tools uh, that have been launched uh, that gives you a sort of you know uh, filtering of candidates and then an analyzing of candidates in terms of their overall fitments their you know career trajectory alignment with what we require a lot of them um i don't want to say it, so therefore you know a lot of things that we do in hr can actually be replaced by tools but to a great extent this can be augmented supported and more efficient uh, more efficiency can be brought in if we use the right set of tools to sum it up uh, to sum it up sanjeevni i think you know uh, hr has uh, gone past that phase uh wherein we used to say what we do is intangible yeah. what we do is immeasurable uh although what we do is um, invaluable uh the point is today 
if you believe what you do cannot be measured uh you might as well not to do it is my advice in the sense of okay. yeah. there are tools available to help you measure uh the effectiveness the impact and the efficiency of everything that we do from a people process perspective so therefore measure everything that you do and in okay. cdk uh in my team under my leadership i always say in god we trust trust all we want to measure yeah great so joy we have reached the end of today's episode do you have any message for our listeners our listeners would be delighted to hear it from you also our audience might want to stay in touch with you post this podcast so it would be great if you could tell them how they can reach out to you absolutely absolutely thanks anjanya i did enjoy this conversation thank you for the opportunity well i all that i want to tell uh, the the hr fraternity my young and experienced colleagues you know what we have chosen is the fantastic thing that we have done in life we what we do as hr as a function is the soul of the organization yes. we yes. decide the quality the pace the tempo the level of excitement in the organization so therefore please do take immense pride don't walk into workplace thinking that you have a long day to go please walk into your workplace thinking that you have a fantastic today fantastic day to do a lot of good things for people around you to create the right set of experience so th- therefore be at your best of motivation those of you who are interested in staying in touch with me um, of course you know i'm there in linkedin uh, my full name is uh, joy george you search joy george cdk global you will find me my email id is dd uh, all small letters dd d for delhi d for delhi underscore 123 at yahoo.com and um, you can drop me a message or chat with me and then i will more than be happy and you know willing to spend some time and learn from you as well I'm sure our listeners must have taken note of that. Joy, it's been a pleasure to have you as our guest today. Your insights and expertise have been invaluable and we are grateful for the time you have taken to share your knowledge with our listeners. So thank you so much, Joy. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank thank you to Sanjeevni. You made me to speak. Your questions were so very interesting that I could I got thank an opportunity you. to share some of these thoughts. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and our YouTube channel for new episodes.